Nvidia has confirmed the release date of the RTX 3060. However, what is the performance level of this card? The problem is, if you wait to watch the reviews to find out, then they will already be sold out. What performance can you expect? Will this latest Ampere card live up to the hype? Will you even get a chance to purchase it for the 329 MSRP? Let's get into it. The RTX 3060 release date has been confirmed by Nvidia. This card will be in high demand as the 60 series cards tends to be the high volume GPU and this is confirmed with the latest Steam survey where you see 5 of the top 12 cards are a 60 series with the GTX 1060 at the top. Nvidia has now confirmed the release date for the 3060 and it is set to go on sale at 6am Pacific Standard Time on February 25th. If you are like me then you may be considering this card for purchase as you have already been unsuccessful at getting a 3070 or 3080 and as the prices keep going higher you just want a GPU to get you by during this latest GPU mining craze. And with 3584 CUDA cores and a whopping 12 gigabytes of VRAM you are wondering what level of performance will this card deliver and up to what price should you consider paying? Now Nvidia showed a couple of points of comparison for performance at the virtual CES event last month and it did not portray a clear picture since they decided to focus on ray tracing and DLSS. But what about just the raw rasterization performance? In the two games shown without ray tracing and DLSS, the 3060 is two times the performance of the 1060. However, compared to the 2060, it is only about 10 to 17% faster. Not the amazing performance uplift we have been seeing when going from a 2080 to a 3080 or even a 2070 to a 3070. So let's dig a little deeper like I have done successfully in the past and see if we can determine this card's level of performance. This is a chart of time spy performance versus the number of streaming multiprocessors. If you watch my video from last July, before the release of the Ampere cards, Based on a leak, I successfully predicted the high-end Ampere card would break 20,000 in TimeSpy, and the 3090 has done just that. So as I have done in several of my previous analysis videos, I populated the chart from the 3090, 3080, 3070, and 3060 Ti. Based on the trends in this curve, and knowing that the 3060 has 28 SMs, we can estimate the performance in TimeSpy to be just over 9,000 at about 9,200. To see how this compares with Turing, the original release of RTX, we can plot the 20 series cards starting with the 2080 Ti, the 2080, the 2070, and then the 2060. And then plotting the 20 series Super Refresh in the 2080 Super, the 2070 Super, and the 2060 Super. And from this chart we can see the generational trend we have seen in the past where the previous generation 80 Ti card is like the current gen 70 series card. Also, we know from the data that the 3060 Ti card is like a 2080 Super. So the RTX 3060 in raw rasterization performance is going to be similar to a 2070 or 2060 Super card. This should not be surprising since the 2060 Super shares the same TU-106 die as the 2070. Where the RTX 3060 will perform better than the 2060 Super or 2070 is in productivity as Ampere has shown to be a very capable computational architecture. So the question may be, what if you are coming from an older generation of GTX GPU like Pascal or Maxwell, or maybe even a 16 series card? Should you consider upgrading to this GPU? Let's plot the GTX 10 series of GPUs, also known as Pascal series, starting with the 1060, the 1070, the 1080, and the 1080 Ti. Clearly the RTX 3060 will perform about 8% slower than a 1080 Ti and will be just a few frames per second shy of its performance in traditional rasterization. If you currently have a GTX 1060, you can expect a doubling in rasterization performance. If you have a GTX 1070, then this could also be a worthwhile upgrade. Just know that it is borderline and would depend on the games you play. But if you have a GTX 1080, then I would not feel very compelled to upgrade unless there is something your 1080 just does not do very well. The performance upgrade is okay, it's just not a wow upgrade and for me a wow upgrade needs to be at least 50% better. Just ask yourself the question, would I upgrade to something that is to within 10% of a 1080 Ti? 
By the way, if you learned something from these videos and would like to see more, then hit that like button and consider subscribing with notifications so that I, along with the YouTube algorithm, will know this content is valued. Switching over to the GTX 9 series or Maxwell based graphics cards, we can plot the 960, 970, 980, and 980 Ti GPUs. And while from this chart you can see that upgrading even from the 980 Ti will give you more than a 50% improvement in performance. Now some could argue that you could get by with the 980 Ti and skip the upgrade. And if that works for the games you play, then yeah, skip this generation. However, for everyone else, upgrading to the RTX 3060 will provide a very noticeable upgrade, a WoW upgrade, in terms of performance. So you have a GTX 16 series card and want to know if you should upgrade. Let's plot the Turing based card starting with a 1650, 1660, and 1660 Ti. And now let's also add the Super Refresh cards in the 1650 Super and the 1660 Super. The upgrade from a 1660 Ti is on the order of 40% and borderline, and with the 1660 Super so close in performance, I would say that this one is also borderline. You could skip this upgrade depending on what games you play. However, if you have one of the other cards, then it would be a worthy upgrade. The MSRP as set by NVIDIA is $329, however they are not making a reference card and AIBs have not listed the MSRP of their cards yet. A European retailer has already marked these up to more than double the price. So the expectation is that this card will be in high demand and that retailers are looking to cut out the scalpers by becoming one of them. I fully expect the retail price of these cards to increase up to $450 to $600 and the average in the low to mid 500 range. Any higher and they would encroach upon the 3060 Ti cards. Of course, this is retailers and not scalpers and I'm sure scalpers will charge close to double the MSRP. Why? Like all Ampere cards before it, this card will also be profitable for mining. From the specs, this card will likely have a hash rate in the low to mid 40 mega hash per second and at today's rates, it would provide a profit of just over $5 a day, which means this card will pay for itself in less than four months of mining, even at the inflated price of $600. So yeah, miners are going to want to get this card. With a performance level on the order of a 2070, I personally would not pay more than $500 for this card since that was the original MSRP for the 2070. If upgrading to an RTX 2070 is something worthwhile for your gaming needs, then this is your generation. However, if you have something more recent like a 2060, 2060 Super, or even a Radeon RX 5700 XT, then this is a skip. The additional VRAM this card offers will not make a difference for gamers and may really be worthwhile for those seeking an entry level productivity card. To get my thoughts on the 80 series of cards released by Nvidia or RDNA 2 by AMD, then check out one of these videos. I hope you found this video informative and will help you in your decision to try to buy or just wait it out. Thank you all so very much for watching. Continue to stay safe out there and I will see you in the next one.